starting route to Habitat for Humanity Restore. and welcome back to my channel. As you just saw, we are already out and about today on the road and that's because, well, I wanted to just do this video from in the car because as I have said last video, I am moving. And so the apartment currently is a very chaotic state, but I was getting tired of packing. I needed a little break from it. I thought, let's just go browse some of the thrift stores, check out some of the places I haven't gone to in a really long time and haven't taken you guys along with me to. And so yeah, it's just kind of like a little break from packing, have a little fun, maybe find something to do some small DIYs too for the new space. So let's go into our first place, which as you saw is the Habitat for Humanity Restore. So I just made a stop in Goodwill because it's pretty much next door to the ReStore and I only got a couple clips in there because I really didn't find anything that was even worth showing. It was very disappointing because I've been to this Goodwill before. I just didn't find anything that I liked or even that was worth putting on camera for the video. So we have one more thrift store to try to check out. Hopefully there's some better luck than what we've had at the last two, but I guess that's part of thrifting is you just never know what you're going to find. Some days you find all great things and then some days you just find nothing. <laughs> some cool stuff at that last thrift store. It was crowded and they didn't really have like a ton of stuff. I don't think I got a ton of clips while we were in there because of how busy it was. But I do want to show you the things that I picked up. But before we go to that, I do want to give a big thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring today's video. BetterHelp is the world's largest therapy service and it's 100% online. And with BetterHelp, you can be connected with 25,000 licensed therapists. To get started, all you need is to answer some questions about your needs and preferences in therapy. That way, BetterHelp can match you with the right therapist from their network. And then you can talk to your therapist however you feel most comfortable. That's whether you want to talk with a text, chat, phone, or even a video call. You can also message your therapist in real time and also schedule your appointments to whatever time is convenient for you. And a big thing about therapy is finding a therapist that works for you. So if you find for any reason that your therapist is not the right fit for you, you can actually switch to a different therapist with no additional charge at any time. 
With BetterHelp, you get the same professionalism and quality you would expect from an in-office therapy visit, but with the therapist who is custom-picked for you with more scheduling flexibility and a more affordable price. And May is Mental Health Awareness Month, which I thought was this was a perfect time to get out this message about mental health and better help as well. And if you think they'd be a good fit for you and you want to try out their service, I do have a discount code. You can get 10% off your first month if you go to betterhelp.com slash actuallyally. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash actuallyally. And I also linked that down in the description box. And with that, let me show you the couple things I picked up from the thrift store. I didn't get a whole lot, but I'm kind of excited about these two finds. So the first one is, it's all stuck together, this really cute wood bowl set. I've never really seen wood bowls of this size at the thrift store, but I've always seen some cool projects made with them. So I thought it'd be fun to do my own kind of thrift flip on this. And then the other item that I found I thought was really cool is this vase. I like that it's like a little bit different than something I would normally pick up. It is like a squat kind of shape. It also kind of reminds me of a seashell or maybe like a flower. I saw a couple different ideas with this, but I'm pretty sure I know exactly what I want to create. And I just couldn't pass it up. I liked the neutral tone of it and the uniqueness of it. So let's come up with an idea for this one as well. I think that wood bowls are such a fantastic thrift store find and they have so much DIY potential. I wanted to keep things simple though with this project because I really just loved the look of how these wood bowls were already. That medium brown tone was just so pretty and it's also what's pretty trendy right now. So I started by giving all three bowls a really good wash with some warm soap and water. Making sure that they were really dry afterward, I then took some sandpaper and sanded down a spot on the bottom because I am going to be attaching one of the smaller bowls to the bottom of this bigger bowl to create a pedestal bowl effect. So I just needed to rough up the finish just a little bit so that glue would stick a little better. And because I really wanted to distress this just a little bit, that shiny finish makes it look a little more outdated on these wooden bowls. So I took a 320 grit sandpaper extra extra fine sandpaper and just sand it down the outside of this large bowl and the outside of the other bowl. I left the inside of the large bowl unsanded because I wanted to still have this be functional bowl and food safe later on. That's not how I'm going to be styling the project, but I do want that option to still be there, especially as I move into the new apartment. But the whole purpose of sanding down the outside with that really fine grit is just to kind of mattify the finish. You can see the comparison right here on the top is the original bowl. On the bottom is the one I sanded. It really just kind of dulls things down and brings in a nice kind of worn look to it. And then I'm simply going to use some wood glue to adhere the smaller bowl to the center bottom of the larger bowl. I realized this large bowl wasn't quite perfectly round. It was more oval, so I just eyeballed where to position the smaller one. And it creates this really lovely looking trendy pedestal or footed bowl that I've just been seeing everywhere and have been wanting one of these wood bowls like this for myself. So it was really cool to be able to make one with this project. I want to bring in another trend, which is the moss bowl trend. I have a couple inspo picks up on the screen right here. I've been seeing this all over. I think it's a really cool kind of chic look. It's kind of like a modern rustic take on bowl filler. So I have two different types of moss that have just been in my stash and that's what I'm going to be using for this. I didn't even want to run out and buy anything new. So I stuffed the bottom of the bowl with just some scrap paper. This was just the packaging that they wrapped the stuff in when I was at the thrift store. So, you know, a good way to reuse it. And then I brought in the moss and started laying it on the top of that paper to make it look like this bowl is nice and filled to the top with this really lovely moss arrangement. It's just a really cool natural look. It's just different and unique. But I think that this would make a great addition to a console table or even a centerpiece depending on what your table setting is. I think it's just a really cool look and I'm really happy with how this very simple project turned out. Moving on 
to the next one. I saw this lovely vase. I just love the color and the shape of it. It's so unique. And I thought, why not turn it into a candle? I mean, I love it as a vase. And once the candle is kind of all melted down, I'll have that vase back. So why not do something like this? So I started with a very large pillar candle. I went to TJ Maxx and just picked up a candle and a scent that I liked because I knew I'd be needing a lot of wax. So I melted that down. It did take quite some time and here's a little progress shot right there. But once it was finally all melted down, I was first able to pull out the wicks from the candle. And since they're unused, you'll actually be able to reuse these in your new candle. So I used some tongs, pull those out and then use the wax that was already on the bottom to stick them into place in the bottom of my new candle vessel. Then I very, very carefully, making sure I had an oven mitt to protect my hands from the warmth of the candle jar, I poured all the wax in to fill up the entire vase. And then you just have to wait overnight until all that wax cools and settles into place and you get this really lovely looking candle. It's a fun way to both upcycle a candle that you don't really like the appearance of, as well as an old vase or container that you want to give a second life. And and just a fun and easy project that you can do in the weekend and it makes your home smell really nice while the wax is melting. forget if you think BetterHelp would be a good fit for you, you can get 10% off your first month using the link in my description box. Make sure that you hit subscribe so you don't miss any more of my upcoming moving and new apartment content. And that's everything I have for you in this video. I'll see you next time. Bye!